friends, it's Grace here at the Comfy Nest with Grace, getting ready to work in the, the Mother Goose book, part six. This is part six of the Mother Goose book. Have you been here for any other, other of the parts, parts one through five of the book? Have you been here to see any of those? Let me grab this feed on my iPad and then we're gonna get crafty with this book. I don't know, I have a couple of ideas in mind and what we can do tonight in this art book. Um, so I consider it like an art journal, junk journal, both, okay? So taking things that would have otherwise been thrown out, like the book itself, probably. I got it for 25 cents at a yard sale, or I mean, excuse me, at a thrift store, um, because the insides had basically fallen out. So it was a mother goose book with like these really bright illustrations and the inside had already fallen out. So I put rice paper on the outside and painted. We painted the back, we stenciled. We've just been working on it. This is part six, like I said. So we're gonna keep working on it tonight. I have some ideas in mind. I'm happy to see anybody that wants to come in and say hello. Come on over, come on into the comfy nest. Hey, Don. Hello, Jane. Hello, Tex BFF. I'm glad you guys got my text. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Anne. Hello, hello, Kana. Hello. Well, I, you know, I texted you guys, like everybody on the text alert service texted you like an hour ago because you know what? It's late for some folks. Like it's nine o'clock central, which means it's 10 o'clock Eastern. And I, I get a little nervous about texting so late when people are probably trying to get to bed, right? I don't want to wake anybody up. So I texted you guys about an hour ago to remind you um, that I was on tonight. Michelle, hey, hey, friend, thanks for the stars. Hello, Sandra, and Denise is here. And Susan, hello, Miss Susan from North Carolina. Thank you, Anne, for the stars. You guys are the bomb. You are the bomb.com. Hi, Christy and Candy. Hello, hello. So, okay, first of all, I got this new glue. Got this new glue. It came in this box. Barely art glue. Okay, you know I love this glue with the precision tip. My art glitter glue. I've had, oop, I've had this for like at least a month. I don't even know. I've lost track. I've had it for a long time. Didn't use it for a long time, but now that I am using it, I stink and love it. Um, I went and ordered another bottle of this. This came with four ounces originally um, in the precision tip, and I thought it was expensive, but it works flipping awesome. So I bought another, like a um, refill. I ordered a refill from Am from on Amazon and it's gonna take like five weeks to get here, but I'm waiting for that to come. I love that glue. Um, the other day on Sunday, I did the blinging the tatas event and I used the glue on my, my tatas that I created. <laughs> We're blinging the tatas. We were blinging the bras for breast cancer awareness. And my little set. Now, the woman who um, uh, who won the auction of my project at the end of that event, um, she made her donation to the Susan Komen Foundation. And I sent her, um, it was in a shadow box, her shadow box tata holder. Um, I sent it to her in the mail. But when I did it, I use this glue. It works really great. But I will say on this really thin vintage fabric this glue it, although it dries clear it did not dry clear on the fabric okay so lesson learned i'm going to be curious to see if this new glue barely art will dry clear on fabric okay so it comes with it comes with a cap on it but then it has this cap and this one comes with three different tips you guys it comes with an ultra fine tip, a fine tip, and a storage tip. Have I haven't opened it yet? It's still, it's still, it's still closed. Anyway, this is coming up. The, look at how teeny tiny the bottle is. It was, a, I think this is a two ounce. Yeah, so you got half the amount. But um, these are the tips. I'm eager, eager to try it. It won't be tonight, but I'm telling you, I, I love to, I love to get the new stuff, so I can try it out and report back to you. For fabric, to solve the problem with the fabric, what you need to be using on your fabrics to glue down. Just like I did in the book, we glued down, oh, and it was on here too. I glued down that, um, that like 
cloth like it's like cheesecloth basically webbing that you can get at Dollar Tree um, they sell it only during Halloween and I, I glued it down on this spider book I also glued it down if you remember on the map in the corner here on the map and it's like it's solidly on there like it's not going anywhere and you can see the glue dried completely clear like you can't see that so when you're working with fabrics and you want to make sure nothing is being seen use liquitex matte gel it's a gel and it'll dry completely clear oh i got a little bit of that fabric in there you can see it that black mark that's a little bit of this this what um like cobweb netting that i got from the dollar tree anyway look at look at how it looks on her like there's my little witch that we did i think this was part five when we did we've got the um i have my piece of felt and then I put that webbing behind her and then black cardstock. And then that picture that I got from Graphics Fairy of that witch scene, it just looks so great. And then this is the map of Boston and I circled Salem, which is where the Salem witch trials were way back in the 1500s, I believe, 1578, if I'm right. Anyway, this book, I'm not a huge ghoulish fan, but this the front of the book is a witch's house. It says, witch lives here. It has laudanum, which is like a poison. And then there's the little, <laughs> the witch with the 31st on there. So I've been kind of doing, I've got some pretty papers in here, foiled papers. Um, I use some of the napkins from the Napkin Lovers Club October box um, in here to create these two pages. These are two different napkins from that box. So we've just been decorating it now. So these are all like scrap pieces of things like the map. So basically junk, I'm making a junk journal, but I'm making it artistic. I have so much fun like playing and making it purdy purdy. So we're gonna do more of this tonight. Hi from Virginia. Hi Miss Marsha, Tax BFF. Thank you Dana for sprinkling. You guys, it's so helpful. When you will hit that button, what are we talking about? Some people say sprinkle, some say spread. We're trying to avoid saying that word, but if you will do that, when you do that, it helps us out so much. So thank you to anybody who's hitting that button. I so appreciate it. I'm so glad you love it, Michelle. It's kind of just turned out really cute. It's kind of fun to see the progression of these things come together, especially when you're working in a book and you just keep adding and adding and adding. Let me get my little spider book back up there. Okay. So, remember this? Remember this? Again, from the graphicsfairy.com website. She has free um, images that you can print out for your projects. And I found some skeleton heads, which they're flipping cool. Again, I'm not a ghoulish decorator, but I thought these were kind of cool for perhaps putting in the book. I've got, I, I printed out a smaller one just in case we needed a smaller one and then the bigger ones. Anyway, what I was thinking is... When I flip through the book, remember, this was a piece of scrapbook paper. This is a piece of scrapbook paper. This is um, coffee dyed, like legal size paper, music sheet, felt. There's my map. Now, I do have in here several pieces of, this is um, torn. <laughs> it's torn um, packing paper. So when I order stuff from like say Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Amazon or whatever and then they crumple up all that paper and they put it in the box around the items that you ordered. That's what this is. It's rather thin. It's kind of like newspaper paper. Very thin um, and dry. So what I was thinking is it would be really cool if opposite the other piece of felt if we put one of these here and then maybe do some stenciling on here but here's the thing oh not this one I think I want this one because it's really dark I have um had where did I put it an extra piece of that black the black cardboard where did I put it now because I was gathering up supplies for today and I have my watercolor paper I have another napkin from the napkin lovers club that we could use I've got my stencils. Where did my black paper go? Hold on, girls. I had an extra piece of black scrapbook paper. That's cardstock. Here it is. It's on the bottom of my pile. It's nice and thick. So I was thinking if I can glue this on here, it's going to reinforce this newspaper type packing paper. Um, and so it would give it more 
two, like m more, just more paper so that if we want to decorate on here, we can. With this being so thin, there's, it's not going to take a lot of moisture. So like paints and stamps and markers, it's just not going to take a lot because it's so thin. But I love it. So what I thought I'd do is we're going to glue this on the back here. I think it would look really nice on the opposite of this. But it's smaller than my packing paper. So I'm going to tear that because I like this torn look here. I like that. I'm going to tear this down the edge here um, of this sheet of, I'm going to tear it so that it, I get a torn edge on here. Um, but I want to, I want to try to, I'm going to tear it and then glue it down. I know I am repeating myself. I'm kind of thinking out loud. <laughs> I am talking to you, but I'm kind of thinking out loud at the same time. So I'm going to roughly, I'm going to move this around a little bit because I don't want a straight edge. I want it to be rough. So I'm moving my ruler around, but I want it about the same size. Do you see what I mean? I want it to have a rough edge. So I tore it while moving the ruler over a lot so that the edge on that is now really rough. And I wonder, I might do the same thing going the other way, like this way. However, I wanna check. We bound this book together ourselves, or I did, <laughs> while you guys watched. Here's the middle where I have my little beads and my tie of my rope. This is where it's bound. I, want, I just want to make sure I don't tear into the binding. And gosh, the binding, the two holes for the binding where this paper is sewn into the book are way up here. I can see it actually right there and right there. So as long as I don't tear into that, it will, it, it will stay solid and it'll stay in the book. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for speaking. Like, Hi, Teresa. Hello, hello. Thank you, Kimberly. She says, I love the idea of your ideas of your books. Listen, I hope that they inspire you guys to just kind of run with your own ideas because once you kind of have a theme for your book, then you can start building off of it in, at your own pace, like however, however you want to, like however quick, however slow you want to. Okay, so see how I tore this so that this is gonna be showing nicely like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides. <laughs> well, I've never done this before, we're gonna see. We're gonna see if we can accomplish this so that we have a nice torn look to our page. I'm not binding, this black page is just gonna get glued to this packing paper. Um, so I, I don't have to worry about binding it. I just don't wanna rip into the binding because I don't want to like have this page fall out of the book. If I rip into the binding where I, I have sewn this into the book, then it, it we, we risk it falling out and I don't want that. So I'm putting the ruler there so I know, you know, I wanna have like about a quarter inch, half inch of that black paper showing, but then I'm kind of moving it around so that I don't have a perfectly straight edge so that it looks like that, okay? So if I put the ruler in place and I gotta do this the opposite way because I'm a righty, I'm going to go this way this time. If I put the ruler, like, I can see where the black paper is underneath. And I want, like, a quarter inch showing. Half inch, quarter inch. I don't measure anything. I don't care. So if I can now start just kind of tearing this. And I'm trying not to tear it straight. You can see I'm going left and right with my tears. Then it'll show up, but it won't look like a perfect line torn. Okay, so now when you look at it, when I glue that down, you'll have this nice border, all the, this torn border all the way around on this side. And on this side, you're just gonna have a black sheet opposite this, but that's where we're gonna put the skull. Hopefully it fits. Okay, so let's glue that down. Alrighty. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use, do I wanna use this or do I wanna use, maybe I should, you could Mod Podge it, you could use your matte medium. You could use your gel medium, like any of these things would work. This stuff sets so fast. That's why I do like this. But this paper is so thin, I'm afraid that if I if I go in on it with this, let's test it. It's just a junk journal, let's test it. So this did show through on my really thin vintage floral, my white floral fabric. It did show through. Matte gel medium did not. Matte gel medium doesn't show at all on the fabric. Let's just see. This is really thin packing paper. 
I don't know. It may show up. It may not show up. Let's use it. It works really well. I do love the way it works. So I've got my paper where I want it. I'm going to apply the glue on the edges here. I think I've got a clog in my tip. I need to clean my tip a little bit. I'm like almost halfway through at least with this bottle, maybe even more than that. I'm just going along the edges and then let's just for whatever sake, go down the middle with one straight line of glue. Can you guys see that? It comes with a pin that you put in it, but I bent the pin so it doesn't even, so I bent it by accident. I was being too aggressive. And now I can't even see the hole because I need my readers. So my pin doesn't even fit in all the way. Like, ugh, I could get another pin, but I'm lazy. Okay, here we go. I have my this where I want it, so I'm just going to lay this down. I think that this is going to show. Yes, I'll show you exactly what I mean. This is what it did to my, this is what it did to my, my really thin vintage fabric. And Marianne, if you're listening, I sent your project out today and I sent it to you. It's perfectly fine all fixed up but um when i did that when i did the project the first time this is what happened that glue can you see it good thing i did it in an artistic way <laughs> all those look at can you see all those wiggly lines i love this glue it sets so fast and it works so well but this is where I love to report back to you guys and say, if you're going to use it, just be careful because if you're using it on something very thin, it's going to show. It's going to show. This will not show. And this will not show. Okay? So it's just knowing what products you have and knowing how and when to use them. Junk journals are a great place to test this stuff out. See? That's just totally fine. Okay. I That's kind of cute. It could make a really cute frame, actually, if I put something in the center. Um, but for now, my main goal was to get to this page over here. And I will need to put a bead of glue in here to get that to stay more solidly here. So I'm going to put a bead of glue right on the edge to keep this black paper down right there. Down more than it was. Um... And then let's do something with this. I like this one because it has the really dark shading on it. This one's a little brighter. They're both very cool. But this one, see how it has that dark shading where the eye sockets are and stuff? I really like that. And so I think what I'm going to do, it's going to fit on here perfectly. I might tear it. Should I tear it or should I cut it? Should we go straight? I, I think I'm going to tear it because we have so many other torn things in the book. So I'm just going to, again, I don't want straight lines. So I'm just going to tear so we get like this. Okay. Um, anybody else have that glitter glue? Have you been using it and liking it? Some of you ordered it. I know that. Some people have told me, oh my gosh, I just ordered it. Um, have you gotten it? Do you like it? What do you think of it? I love it. But it's you need to know what things work for and what they don't work for. Okay, here we're a little tighter. We don't have as much room here to tear. So I'm doing it like super chunky, torn look here. See, it's like really off. And I like it. I like it wonky. Like I always tell you guys, I like things wonky. I saved all the packing paper. I put You put my Happy Mail for my journal. I love using it with my jelly plate. Yay! Good for you, Janice. Yay, I'm so happy to hear that. Michelle says, I've got so many things I'm working on, but I'm going to do the junk journal. They're so fun. They're so fun to work on. Uh-oh, this one's not as wonky. Come on, I want wonky. I'm going to tear a little bit more into a couple of spots because it was that's too straight for me. Well, maybe that's good. That way. It's just going to fit. i got to tear a little more paper off. It's just going to fit. So I gotta get I gotta get closer to the skull here. Because it's just gonna fit. I love the torn look. I think it's just super cool. And you know what we could do? I haven't done a whole lot of distressing in this one, but let's get a distress pad out um, and distress the edges of this. If I can find the right drawer, Gracie Grew. 
Um, let's see. And where is my the distress ink I usually use is that one, but I could probably use that. So I usually use a distress ink, either like vintage photo or walnut. One of them's called walnut something or other. Um, and you can you can take the pads straight on your edges, but it looks really it looks darker that way, and it usually just hits one spot. So if you use one of these foam applicator things that you can get at the craft store and just hit the edges of your paper. It's going to give it that distressed look. And actually, I'm going to do it to the edges and then I think I'm going to pull some of that color in because my paper is so crispy white. I should have printed it. I should have printed it on some of my coffee stained paper. But I didn't. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to muck it up on our own. So it looks a little old and vintagey old and worn and maybe this was something that somebody had torn up left somewhere to be thrown out and somebody grabbed it out of the garbage okay so i got the edges all like browned up but i'm gonna i'm gonna really make it like super super worn we're gonna crinkle it and we're gonna open it back up and then I'm going to hit that with this distress pad so that it um, grabs some more of the color. Let's grab this craft mat and we are going to like, I'm going to come in now and you can see if I just go lightly over it, how it just hits the parts that crinkled up. If I just go lightly over it, I'm going to get this distressing on just the crinkle parts that came up. If you, if you push down a little harder, you'll get more crinkle, more darkness, like on the parts that are down too. But I want to hit all those wrinkles. I want to like not straighten it so much. You want to, you want it crinkly so that you're hitting all those crinkly parts with the brown. And you don't have to just use brown. You could pull in, like if you wanted green in here or if you wanted whatever color you want, you don't have to just do brown. But of course, like aged paper usually gets brown. I'm going to hit the, the skull, too. My kids are watching. We just started my son's. And you want to watch a movie? They're both still homesick. And um, I said, sure, I'll watch a little bit of a movie with you. And they're watching the freakiest movie, you guys. It's like extraterrestrial. It's one of the Marvel Avenger movies. It's like it's one of those in those series. And it's really creepy. It's really kooky, but my boys are 14 and 16 and that's the stuff they like. So see how it's all crinkly and wrinkled? I actually, another way that I like to distress that's going to give it a, like a harsher look, I put my pad down and then I take my paper and I put my paper on the pad and I just like tap it like in some spots and then you're going to get like these darker random like See how it's darker and it's random and it's not going to be everywhere. I thought it would be really fun, you guys, if we gave this, this head like a grill, like a gold grill, like, <laughs> like a gold tooth. Wouldn't that be freaking funny? I'm sorry, but tell me your vote. Should we give this guy or gal a gold tooth or not? I just thought that would be so funny because that's the kind of sense of humor I have. Okay, look. So see what I'm doing? I'm just like randomly tapping it into the ink pad. And like I said, you don't have to just use one color. You could come in with two colors if you wanted. But I do like the look because it looks pretty old and crinkly. Much better, right? Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, that's kind of fun to do. And, you know, the results are a little bit different every time. Yes, a gold. Someone said yes, a gold tooth. Hey, Christy, thank you for spreading the joy. Thank you for doing that. Where do I get the metallic waxes? Amazon doesn't have a big selection. Go to scrapbook.com. Try them. Scrapbook.com, Michelle. Have you ever tea or coffee stained your pages to give it an antique look? Yes, Dana. I just taught the members of the Craft Therapy Club how to do that inside that group. And so that lesson is in the library inside the Craft Therapy Club. So if you have any interest in joining that craft club that I have, it's a monthly membership. You can cancel any time. Um, 
why don't you private message me? I'll give you a coupon for $5 off your first month. Or just, I think the coupon code is Try Club. So if you go to um, thecomfynest.com and sign up for the Craft Therapy Club, you'll find the instructions on how to do that. I did it in my own kitchen, my own stove, showed everybody how to do it. Lots of good feedback from the girls on how it went for them the first time. They're not, the readers are not on my head tonight. They're, they're sitting right here. I had to use it a few minutes ago. Oh yeah, the glue does kind of look like a spider web. Good call, Jackie. I like that. I like the way your mind thinks. Oh, Michelle has a glue. She says she loves it. Denise has it. Yes, when you need a fine tip, it is really nice to have that super fine tip. Yes, Genesis just stressed the edges. I'm way behind on, on comments. So I'm gotta, I've got to catch up with you guys. Read my mind from Oklahoma, Janice says. Great looking with distress. Thanks for the tip. I didn't think about wet, wet, wadding the paper and then just, yeah, crinkle it all up. Get it all crinkled up and then un, unravel it a couple of times and it'll get all those cool wrinkles that you can hit with that stamp. Should we do a gold tooth? Yeah, Maureen says, yes, do a gold tooth. Gold tooth with diamond dust, Jackie. You're on it, girl. Let's do it. All right, let's give it a grill. <laughs> Dana says you're so funny. Yeah, let's give him a grill. He'll be like this vintage old head with a grill. Yes, we could totally do that. You're welcome, Dana. Okay, let's put this aside. We're going to give this guy or gal. I don't know who it is. Guy or gal, a gold tooth. So I want this to go right here, but it would be kind of cool if it wasn't like flattened out on here, like not so perfectly placed. Hang tight. I wonder if I shouldn't pull so this is the netting that we used this is the netting that we used on the other parts of the book but I have this one that's like so it's like a creamy color so we could put that down behind here a little bit to make it um, more textured in the background and then it would mirror or mimic some of the other pages right so you could use black i was just thinking cream would show up better on the black background so let's take a snippet of this um i can't tell is that two layers or is that one but let's i just like i just cut a snippet of it off i'm not being real like calculated about this so i think i'm going to put a little bit of that there so that when I glue it down, it's kind of sticking out on the edge. So let's do that a couple of, I'm not like on the corners, a couple of the corners. Okay, like here and here, and then we'll glue that paper down too. It's so like there and there. I don't love the way this edge is, but it, you just have to leave room for the binding there. It is what it is. Okay, um, I'm gonna use the matte gel. It will dry, it will dry clear, but it takes some time to dry. The best way that I've found to apply it, if I can get a good one, I will show you, is just to use a palette knife. And I'm almost over with this. I mean, like I'm, I, I don't have much of this one left, but do you see how thick it is? It's thicker than sour cream even. And I'm just gonna put this in here. You see, I'm just gonna put a little more in here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this guy into it. And it's good, like it, whatever, okay, this is gonna dry hard. It's gonna be like a hard glue. It, it's not gonna look like glue. It's just gonna dry clear, but it does dry hard. So you saw on the spider book and the other pages that I just showed you, by putting it on top of the netting, the netting is not gonna be free flowing anymore. It's gonna be, it's gonna dry hard. So I think what I'm gonna do is put it in the center so that that dries hard and clear. And then I'm gonna leave these loose pieces dangling. I'm not gonna glue those down so that we have both. A little bit of dangle, a little bit of not so dangly, okay? And I, I want the texture behind the skull. So I actually, I could put more of it back here just for texture, right? And then stick the skull on there. Like, let's just, why not? Let's put this behind the skull. Cause it's gonna make that paper like not so flat on the um, on the page, if that makes sense. Like I am having trouble getting glue out of here cause I need to get another, I have another jar over there. I just gotta go grab it. All right, 
let's stick this down in here. It's just for the sake of getting like something thick under there. I could have used jute rope. I could have used scraps of fabric. It doesn't matter. I just want it to be like chunky underneath that skull. <laughs> Why? I don't know, because it's old and decrepit. We'll have something hanging out the edge here. Why not make it look real messy and like out of control here? I have plenty of this here. If I could just get it in the right places. Yeah, messy and out of control. <laughs> messy and out of control. And then we'll give the skull a gold tooth. Why not? All right, a little bit more down here. This is this last piece. Let's, I want to open it up a little so I can spread it out. You guys, this is so much fun to play with. Now remember, it's going to dry clear. So getting it on my little, my orange piece of felt right there is no problem. All right, some of it's going to be dried hardened to the page and some of it's going to be loosey-goosey floating around like a spider web would okay and then we are going to glue this down on top of here but i don't want the whole thing stuck down like i, I just i want it affixed i want it glued down but i don't want it flattened out like a regular piece of paper so i'm going to see if i have enough glue with the matte gel medium if i push down on this through the webbing if it's gonna if it's gonna hold that down I don't know never done this before but I do want to see more of this knitting so I'm gonna pull some of that out of there why not where's my rag I'll get a little shop towel because I have glue on my fingers and then everything so see how it's like crinkly I want it crinkly I want it crinkly and I don't want it completely stuck on there but I want it stuck on enough so it'll stay so let's put a little more glue right here and push that down and then this can stay up like this can stay up see just why not because I can't, I can't get any out we're like it's like the bottom of the mayo jar it's like there's no more Hellman's somebody gotta go get more Hellman's for the sandwiches okay all right that might be good um I'm just gonna take the excess like them like there's lots of excess it just doesn't need to be there Oh, and you, I want you to kind of stay right there. You can be loosey-goosey on the end, but I want her to kind of stay there. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see what I'm talking about, because I want you to see that I want it to be really variable in the way that it is on the page. So see how the edges are kind of stuck up? Like here, I want that want that yes I want texture and I want the edges to be sticking up and you can still see the crinkles but it needs to stick on the page that's cool looking right oh my gosh let's give him a gold tooth <laughs> why not everything's all wet right now we might as well do it okay so we gotta pick a tooth it's gotta be one in the front right that's what they usually do it's usually one on the front oh I'm so glad you love it Jackie it's so fun to play with these things, you guys. All right, so gold tooth, what do we need? I've got, well, I have gold stickles. Do you think that's gold enough? I think it would be. I'm gonna put a little on and we'll just, we're gonna test the gold tooth. Yeah, you guys, this would be enough. I don't know, no. You know, it's the thing. If it's really thick, it would be enough. But if you want to spread it, it's it's going to be, it's because it's translucent, it won't be enough. So, hold on. We're going to figure this out. We are going to use gold paint. Hold on, girls. i got to grab some gold. We're going for the gold. I'm going to grab several different gold paints that I have. Sometimes a gold paint is enough. This one, this Martha Stewart one is Florentine gold. Okay, look. This is why I do this stuff you guys. I have all kinds of gold products. In the craft therapy club, we do this where we test them. And I'm able to show, like, if you use this, that's the result you're going to get. If you use this, that's the result you're gonna get. See, these are all golds. These are all considered golds, but look at how green this one is. That looks very green to me, but that's a gold. That actually might be a good color for this because it's a skull for goodness sake. 
But you see, I love to test my products on a piece of watercolor paper and write notes. I write the date. I take all my notes so that when I'm trying to figure out what would look good here, I can take my little notes out and say, this is Ranger Embossing Gold, and that looks freaking awesome, that one. But this one, what is that? That's Tacky When Dry with Walmart Gold Glitter. That might be the winner. Look at how, <laughs> how shiny that one is. All right, Tacky When Dry and Walmart Gold Glitter. That's, my, that's what my notes say, so that's what we're gonna use. But see, there are all different kinds of metallic paints and markers and glitters and embossing and all the things. But let's grab the Tacky When Dry and some gold glitter from what when I say Walmart gold glitter this is what I'm talking about that's what that is so we're gonna paint on a little bit of this tacky and dry so I'm gonna need a little ugh, little paintbrush because I just need a little bit of paint and I want to control where it goes you know what I'm not using that one because it's one of my favorite brushes and I don't like to use good paint brushes in glue I just don't um that's one of my favorites so hold on girls uh, talk amongst yourselves. Oh, here, I found an old, old icky one. All right, how many teeth should I do? Should I do one on the top and one on the bottom? That would be kind of fun. <laughs> the green would be cool. The green is actually this. Mm, not that. It's this. It's a Spectrum Noir pen in the gold color. Um, but it, 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 when it's held up next to all those other golds, it really does. It looks green, doesn't it? The reason I'm not going to use the pen is the pen is very liquid. Um, and this is a very thin, it's just regular computer paper that I printed that on. So I would have to gesso it first. And I don't want, I'm just, I would rather just do the tacky one dry because this doesn't take very long to dry. I think I'm going to do one bottom tooth and one top tooth one top tooth right next to each other and that's a lot more glue than I need because it's just two little teeth two little teethers right I mean we could do we could do many <laughs> this is cracking me up I'm gonna do more than one hold on you guys this will make me I love stuff like this like I love the unexpected and I love 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 you guys I just love so much like we have so many craft supplies. Just show me some hearts. If you are a person that has a lot of craft supplies, you have all the things. You have all the things, but are you using all the things? That's the question. I love projects where I can just pull like from my stash, from everything and like, okay, let's use this, then let's grab this. Look at all the hearts, right? Tell me, you see stuff and you're like, oh, I gotta go get that, right? I do the same thing. Oh, I don't have one of those. I'm gonna go get it. Oh, I don't have that yet. I'm gonna get it and try it. We all do it. That's part of the fun of crafting. It's part of the fun of it. And craft hoarding is like a big, right? We say we're craft hoarders, but you're not a hoarder if you're using it. So pull out all the supplies and a junk journal or an art journal is a great place to pull out all the stuff and play with them. This has to dry a little bit. I'm gonna grab a drying tool and dry it. And then we're gonna put that glitter on. Oh my gosh, this tacky when dry is pretty darn cool. That's what it's called. I got mine off Amazon, but the company does, they have their own website. Oh, we're going to have to get the readers out. Um, the craft, the craftersworkshop.com. That's what the TCW stands for. Love this stuff. It goes on wet. It's tacky once it's dry it's still tacky it almost feels like a band-aid adhesion like like that it's like a really soft tacky but the glitter sticks to it awesome so this is what we're going to use and, one more. and you just you'll get a feel like the more you use it the more you'll understand how how tacky you need it to be i'm gonna put a little bit of this on there and i'm gonna dump the excess into the garbage because i'm lazy and i'm in a book here so i can't really do anything else with it we're blinging up the we're giving him a grill <laughs> him or her and you don't even know how many teeth i did wait till you see so what i like to do and what i did on my little sample is i take that glitter and i just rub it little tiny circles into 
that tacky when dry. So you'll see how good my art skills were. Wherever I painted that glue is where it's gonna go. So you could write your name with it and then let that tacky when dry dry and then push your glitter into it. You just have to push it in and it really, it like sticks in it, almost looks like a sticker, it, it sticks so well. Okay, I'm gonna bang this into the garbage, hold on. This is funny. I, the bottom tooth, hold on, the bottom tooth got a little, the bottom tooth looks bigger than the top tooth, but that's okay. Oh gosh, that's funny. All right, we're knocking off the excess. You'll see, you'll see his grill now. Wait, 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 I gotta hold it up right so you can see. Can you see it? Oh my gosh, that's funny. I, I'm trying to get it so, and I can't even see what I'm showing you. That is hilarious. I just did the top four teeth and one bottom tooth. That is stinking funny and totally unexpected because that page looks totally vintage. But then you get that glitter. Okay, on here, I don't know what made me think of it. You guys, that's so funny. Oh, the grill, the grill, the grill on a skull. Why not? Oh, Jana, that's a fun idea to silver glitter the whole mouth. Old teeth are green. Listen, I could pull out, I could pull out the Spectrum Noir. Do you want to see? I mean, you saw it on that sheet. That was the green. Yeah, that's this, this, this. It comes out looking more green. My favorite Spectrum Noir color is just the, the clear overlay, but this gold one comes out green. So let's see. There's a silver one too, but we could add a little of this around it. I just not quite sure how this regular computer paper is gonna take this because it's really wet. It's like a it's like a watercolor brush. It is a watercolor brush. And when you squeeze it, the glitter gold comes out or whatever color it is. I like I'm gonna put a little bit of this where I missed on that top tooth. And then let's see, should I do, a, I'll just do a couple, why not, just to show you. I just don't know how well it's gonna stick. It's like bright green. The thing is with this, you have to really shake it to get the shimmer to show up and then um, make sure you <laughs> shake it with the cap on, otherwise it'll go all over the place. Let's, I'll just hit a couple more of these teeth. Heck, let's just do them all. It's not gonna be nearly as glittery as the um, the glitter with the glue, but you'll get to see the difference. Oh, that's creepy. I gotta go down the line. You can, these ones are so darkened out that you can't even really see the teeth, but I'm gonna cover them with a little bit of it anyway, just so it has the shimmer. All right, where did that go? Put that back. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this because it's so dark the teeth are so dark but now we've got now we've got green glitter shimmer and we have actual glitter on there do you see the green it's hard to see. i don't have that big light on so it's really hard to get the glitter to show oh <laughs> that's funny that's funny okay over here i was thinking do you remember um, originally the, the rice paper, and I have to be careful because that glue is all still wet. The rice paper had the diamonds on it in the background. So we added diamonds to the back here with the, with a, um, with this, I think it was with this one, this stencil. So what I was thinking to do is to mirror some of those diamonds. So I like to pull those same design elements that you've seen other places in the book, like the netting, even though I chose to use the off-white netting this time. The netting is elsewhere in the book, so I added some more of it somewhere else in the book. The diamonds and circles would be other, that's another design element that's on the cover and on the back that we can add to this. Now I need to grab a stencil brush, not that one. I need a good stencil brush. We need to grab the essential stencil ones and some black paint or gesso, you could use gesso. I'm just gonna put a few diamonds on this orange fabric just to, um, let's 
see, I kind of let it off on here. Just to add some of that same design element so that it mimics. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this page yet, this orange felted page yet. I'm not sure. We could put, this guy faces the other way. <laughs> or we could do a little one. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but that doesn't stop me. Like I really wanna add some diamonds and circles in this area of the book because we haven't seen any like diamonds replicated, that design element replicated anywhere. So I thought it would be really fun to just add some of that. See how easy that is to show? To add a little bit of that diamond look in here. And so whatever I put in the middle here, the diamonds will show kind of on the outsides is what I was thinking. And it doesn't, I don't like things to be perfectly, like I don't want it to all be symmetrical. I just wanna add diamonds. And because it's felt, it's it'll really suck up your paint. So you can see I'm really lightly adding those diamonds to a couple of spots on here, just so it's gonna match what we did on the back and what was on the front, okay? I have to pull out, I know I have bat stencils from Essential Stencil. I'm gonna have to pull some of those out. I'm loving this page. Loving it! I <laughs> so hope you guys do too. Mm. Dana likes the sparkly. I'm so glad. A black one, that's a good idea. A black tooth. I just ordered three things from Amazon while watching it. Oh my gosh, Jill. It's so fun though, right? It's so fun. Like I love to get new supplies and to try, love. I love it, love it, and love trying them out. Yes, the drying tool. So this drying tool, this is the Chocotor one. It is a drying tool. It's two different, two different settings, but it doesn't get hot. Like it's, it's like using an old hair dryer, but it's a lot smaller. Um, it does have the little kickstand, um, the cord short. So it doesn't like, you're not going to get tangled. It doesn't take up a lot of room. I do like using that, but then I have the heat gun for the embossing or when you want more heat to a project. Okay. Yeah. I love all the things. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, right? That tacky when dry. I can't believe how small the jar is either, but it's, it, it, it goes such a long way. You, you are only going to use a little bit at any given time. So I think it'll last you so long. Jackie, I love those emoji. Where did you find those? Those spooky head emojis. They're cool. All my glitter, scrapbook paper, several crickets, lots of supplies in my storage. After my second knee surgery, after Christmas, the first year, I'm recovering and digging into my storage, hopefully by spring. Good for you, Jana. Good for you. <laughs> Maureen's loving it. <laughs> I see lots of laughing emojis. <laughs> Kimberly says, OMG, I love it. <laughs> That's so fun. Why not? It's your journal. Go for it. Uh-oh. Jana said she had a frozen screen. Oh my gosh, the teeth. Jenna, that's funny. Dana says, hilarious. Can you make a pocket and put some vintage Halloween cards in a pocket? Yes, you can. Yes, you can actually. Note, it's not normal frozen screen. It's putting a message of interrupting has to be something new with Facebook. I don't know, Jana. Thank you. Someone said the skull looks great. Who said that? Oh, Michelle, thank you. Hey, Kathy, I haven't seen you in a while. Hello, hello. Oh, Jane got the tacky when dry too. You're gonna love it with, with the glitter. It just, it like just sucks up the glitter. It's awesome. Okay, so the other thing I was thinking, speaking of pocket, I was thinking, see, this is wet, so I have to be very careful. Hi, buddy. Mm -hmm. You going to bed? I'll be done pretty quick, so I'll come I'm down and check on you. Okay, and make sure you do a good job brushing, flossing, please. I'll check on you in a few. Love you, dude. Okay, so what I was thinking, here, remember this um, piece of canvas that I put right in the center of the book? And I had cut this out because I wanted that, <laughs> I actually wanted that to be the front and then I put it in upside down. I wanted that to be on the other side, but oh well. So what I have is I have this flap here and this is a piece of canvas like um, fabric and we decoupage this cute little cornfield apple orchards and sunflower napkin from the Napkin Lovers Club. We put that on the front. So sunflowers, apples, a few little birds and they have cranberries in their mouth. It's really cute. Some falling leaves. What I was thinking is I could 
we could make this a tuck spot. Now here's where I have to be really careful because this is still wet over here and over here with that glue. Let's put something in here so that it doesn't stick to, so it doesn't stick to the other page. But here, what I was thinking we could do is make this a tuck spot rather than a flap. So if I glue this and I glue this down, this could be a tuck spot on the back side of here. I'm actually gonna change that fold a little bit. And then I might do something different with this, the shape of this, because I'm not loving it. So let's make this a little tuck spot. And I'm gonna use the same um, matte gel medium. Will hold. It should hold that down in place, no problem. Um, I put my palette knife back in the water, so let's clean it off. So I was thinking about that. That would be a cute little tuck spot. And this is part six of this series. Tell me in the comments, have you guys seen all or part of this? You know what I should be doing is putting this on this side so I know how much I need. I just need enough to close it up. Um, did you see all of these, some of these? How much of this have you seen? I'm wondering because um, I could do a quick flip through if it's helpful for some of you who are here. Um, and I've numbered them all. So when you look at the, um, the videos that I have in the, on the page, if you go to the live tab and you look at the descriptions of all the videos, they're numbered one through, now this one's number six. So you'll be able to easily find them and watch them in order if you want to. I wanna make sure I get this nice and glued down. So this is a nice thick glue. I just need to make sure that I'm not getting any of that glue on the outside here because when I close this, it'll it'll just it'll glue right to that other page. So I want to make sure I don't have any glue on the outside, which I do. Just want it on the inside because we're gonna make this a little tuck spot to tuck something in there. And little Halloween cards would be perfect. Halloween tags would be perfect for that. I've watched every episode of this fun journal. Yay, Jane, so exciting. Hi, Debbie. Janice says, I would love for you to go through and, and show us. Okay, I've watched all of them. I love watching you do art journals and junk journals. Thank you, Gia, thanks for saying that. You guys, I posted another video today. It's only five minutes long um, because I sp like sped it up like 10 times so that it's just a quick video to see how a page comes together and it's in my new prayer journal. I posted it, but I don't think that people are seeing it. I don't know what is going on. Like Facebook is so weird. I posted it, but I've only gotten a couple of like um, notifications that people liked it or hearted it, like that they've seen it. So I don't know why, I don't know why that is. I also shared it in the Craft Therapy Club to make sure that those girls saw it. And I may have also put it in the, um, the Crafty Chicks Club. But if you look on the page here, you should see a video of another new journal page that I was sharing with you guys. This is all being done inside a Halloween book. Yes, Michaela. I should do another one for Christmas. You're right, Mary. I actually, I'm trying, remember we talked about um, the washi tape and a washi tape challenge. I'm kind of drumming up our washi tape challenge, washi <laughs> tape challenge for inside the Crafty Chicks Club. So if you're not a member of the Crafty Chicks Club, go, it's just a free craft community here on Facebook for Crafty Chicks who follow the company now. So you are all welcome to join. Um, the description of this video has the link to that group, but you can just type in the Comfy Nest Crafty Chicks and it'll pop up. Join the group because we are gonna do a washi tape challenge, a project challenge in there. And I think I'm gonna do kind of, I'm, I'm still going through the process of figuring it out, but I think I'm gonna do like a, a, a live demo inside the Crafty Chicks Club. And then the challenge would be for all of you to do your own with, it's gonna be washi tape, so you're gonna wanna have some washi tape, um, to do your own project with the washi tape, like according to the demo. And you know me, I'll always say like, do your own take on it. Um, and then I'll probably give away some prizes or something like let's just make it super fun in there so we can have a challenge we can all post our photos and see them and be inspired by each other's photos we can ask questions and chit chat about all of our projects inside the group and then like, we always have to have a little prize right <laughs> so maybe we'll do some prizes in there so stay tuned for that 
I've got it coming. I'm still trying to figure that part out. I can see you guys saying you've not seen that video yet. It is on the page. I shared it earlier today, like this morning. Debbie says she hasn't seen it. I'll have to go like get to the Comfy Nest business page when we're done here. Like if this video popped up in your feed and you clicked on the video, you're in the video, but to get to the page, then click anywhere on the screen and the, and you'll see on the upper left hand side, you'll see the business page name. Click on that and that'll bring you to the business page and then scroll down and the video is there. I don't know why it's not showing to everybody. Christina's seen it. Christina, you're in the craft therapy club though, so you may have seen it through there as opposed to on the business page. I just don't know why it's not showing to everybody. <laughs> Dana, you're cracking me up. She, did you guys read her comment? She said, my earbuds just died and I can't turn my volume on because my hubby is sleeping. <laughs> She's gonna have to read her lips. Can you read that, Dana? That's for you. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey, Angelica, hello, hello, friend. Jane didn't see it, but she's gonna look for it. Hey, CJ in Kentucky. She's leaf peeping. I love it. Ooh, Jenna says, I love the washi tape challenge idea. I have so many and I rarely use them. Well, that's going to be the challenge is I'm going to show you and I haven't quite decided the project. So I'll either show you one or maybe more projects in a live inside the group. I think I'll do it inside the group. And then you guys can follow along and create your own based on what I showed you. It doesn't have to be exactly, you know, I'm, I'm never the one to say you have to do it exactly like mine. I'll tell you, you do it somewhat like mine. Um, using washi tape would be the requirement and then we'll post all our photos. I think it'd be super fun. Michelle didn't see it either, darn it. Judy loves the book. Let's take a quick look through. This is still drying, so I need to leave that through. Now, this is drying, but it's not going to touch anything. It's all tucked in these flaps. Oh, that's stuck a little bit. It's all tucked in those flaps. You know what I'm going to do right here since it's stuck a little bit? This shiny outside piece of paper. See that shiny plastic? I'm going to put it in between these two because the glue is less likely to stick to the shiny, and when I pull it off the shiny, it's not going to damage it. But if I pulled it off this pretty paper, it would damage it. I'm going to flip the book around. And we will do, <laughs> we just did the skull with the teeth. Okay, here's the front cover. Um, and this is a piece of rice paper that was just about the size of the book. I got it from decoupagequeen.com. So we, I, I decoupaged the, um, the rice paper on. The book cover was the same colors. Oh, I'm gonna lose all my my uh, my my barriers there. The book cover. We're just gonna have to. We're just gonna have to survive that. That's okay. Um, the book cover was the same color scheme as this. Really bright, beautiful, um, but muted colors, all like in similar greens because it was a forest. So that's what the cover looked like. So we covered it with the rice paper, and then I painted the edges to really match and to meld together. I painted the binding, we painted the back and then stamped all over it with a bunch of different stamps to try to get it to mimic what was going on on the front. So you can see the diamonds there. That's why we have the diamonds on the back. So the diamonds and the circles, those see circles, uh, circle, circles. <laughs> and then the diamonds, we're trying to mimic those same themes throughout the book. Okay, so I like to add those here and there inside the book. Okay, so then we open it up. I had painted the inside cover so that all we kept was Mother Goose's book, or um, house, excuse me. It has like a little cat, a little owl, um, Mother Goose, and whatever these animals were. Remember, I couldn't, I don't know if they're goats or sheep. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not an animal person. Then I bound inside of it all of these like junky papers. So... This is scrap paper that I've passed up a gazillion times and have never used. So that's a piece of scrap paper. And so they're, they're, in, they're all laid out flat. You bind it in the middle. So when you close it, you get a mirror. You get a mirror copy. So this is the opening flap, but it's also the closing flap because all of these papers were bound in one. It's called a signature, one signature all sewn together. So scrapbook paper, scrapbook paper. This is napkin decoupaged. 
This is napkin decoupage on a um, coffee stained legal size paper. Coffee stained legal size paper, music paper, piece of felt. <laughs> we did this witch and the netting last week. We did the witch and the netting. I think not last week, last time. Um, and then here's an old map from Alamo <laughs> of Boston. That's where I grew up, that's my hometown. And um, Salem, which is where the witch trials were in I think 1758. The Salem witch trials were in Salem, Massachusetts, just north of Boston. So I circled those in black and had all this like drippy, I wanna get more drippies on this page, but I'm gonna have to coat it with gesso first. Um, and then we put some of that black knitting here, some of that black knitting behind this witch that I got off of the graphics fairy. And then here, this page I love. This is, this was a piece of throwaway paper, basically. This piece of paper was a piece of throwaway paper. It was coffee dyed paper that I had printed this so blessed on for the My Craft Great group. And we decoupaged it. That's that piece of paper right there. This piece of paper was what this came off of. We decoupaged it onto the house and I was done with the project, but the piece of paper had the outline of the house just perfectly intact. So I couldn't throw it out, so I kept it. And it went in on this page, and I used behind that, this is vinyl from the Dollar Tree. They have cut out vinyl now for your crickets and stuff, and so I bought it just to see, is it really worth it? It's sticky-backed paper, and this one's glittered. So I put that behind the house and then we put um, the new essential stencil transfers on top to kind of create that frame of the house, which I love. This is a like a piece of scrapbook paper that I had passed up, passed up over and over again. On the back, it still has the writing. Like this has not been decorated yet. So we'll do something with that eventually. Scrapbook paper. Oh, this is scrapbook paper covering my manila envelope. That's the bottom of my manila envelope. And I left this as a flap. Okay, and then this is that piece of like muslin canvas that we decoupage that napkin on. We're just creating this little tuck spot. Here's the center of the signature, all of those pieces of paper, with my um, tie for binding it. And then I added little beads to the bottom because I thought that was cute. So those hang down. Here's the other part of that envelope. And I left it open so that we could do something with that eventually. I don't know what, but we'll do something with that. Here's the back side of that scrapbook paper that I had never used, but those ladies are kind of interesting. And then here's that packing paper that we just glued down. <laughs> and then there's the scrapbook paper and the skull with the blinged out teeth with this grill. <laughs> there's the rest of my um, belt. Now we're on to the second part, because remember, here's the center. Here's the center. Here's the center of my book. So this is gonna mimic everything on this side. They're, they're the exact, like, that's the other side. So this is the other side of that. This is the other side of the envelope. This is the other side of the girly paper, packing paper, felt, music sheet. So we're just going the opposite order. Coffee dyed paper, coffee dyed paper, packing paper and then that piece of scrap of paper that I had passed up a million times that was in the front. I have not painted this yet. I will probably do something similar to what I did in the front, but I haven't done it yet because I'm not quite sure. So that's the whole book and it just keeps getting like more, you just keep adding more and more to it. I do, okay, so when you are gluing things in your book and creating all these beautiful pages to play with, just be careful that when you glue something, that you don't close your book and glue something down that you didn't intend to. So this is the page that I added that glue to where it's sticking a little bit. So that plastic wrap on that stencil cover will be just fine to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna leave this open overnight just to dry because that's the really thick matte gel medium. And so that's gonna take some time to dry. It's, it's really thick and it will cure and it will dry completely clear like it did on my little spider book and on the other parts of this. Um, but I have, I have added these little diamonds. I'm not quite sure. Maybe we'll put a phrase here. I don't know. We'll figure something out. A little bit at a time. It's really fun when you're working on a project like this to just 
so if you want to create but you're not quite sure, you can always come to one of your art journals or junk journals and just do a little bit. You don't even have to fully know. I don't know where I'm going with this page. I have no idea. But I know I want to add more diamonds on the inside. I had found this paper that's like mimics kind of the diamond shape. And it's similar colors. It's actually really similar to these pages. So I have these pulled out because maybe we'll put these in there somewhere. I'm not sure. As I'm going around in my craft room, I'm working on other stuff. When I see something that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's diamonds, just like in my junk journal, I pull it. I say, okay, that napkin, the orange matches so well, the orange in this, I pull it because I know I probably will use this napkin in here somewhere. This is from the Napkin Lovers Club October box as well. So I start pulling things. When I'm working on a project, I pull things and then I have this bin. This is my bin for this journal. So here's some more of that black, this black paper, another piece of that cardstock. Here's more map. And then here are other pieces of paper that I've pulled that I'm like, man, that really matches. That's actually a scrap from one of the pages that were that's already in there. So I start pulling stuff and I throw it. Anytime I find something that will go with this project, I put it in the bin. So that the next time I grab the bin, I can add more to it. So I just bought a new stencil. Where did I put it? So here, these skulls will all go in there. These are all my printouts from, um, I was on Graphics Fairy and found all these witches and skulls. Those will all go in my bin so that next time I pull my bin, I can go through it and pull all the stuff that coordinates with this themed book. Um, I just got this new stencil I'm excited about, and it's the circles. So I want to use this in here. That's going to go in there. And I, I, got, I have these. I used these yesterday in the Craft Therapy Club. On We have a monthly challenge, and this the theme this month is witches. So I use this on the witch's dress. And it's purpley and it's sparkly and purple, I think goes really well with the oranges. So maybe this will get used in here. That'll go in there. This is that stencil we just used, that goes in there. So that next time I wanna use, um, do more in this book, I can do it. This is gonna go up on the shelf to dry and I'm gonna leave it open like that all night long. Um, that's about it. So I love, I love that you guys are hanging out with me as we work on this project. I love that it's coming together slowly and that you're kind of seeing the whole progression. I think that's super fun that we can do it from beginning to end together. And I'm super happy to have your company while I'm working on it. So if you are here as a, I'm gonna grab some names for the, um, the Happy Mail basket too. So stay tuned here. I'm just gonna make some room for my writing. Um, if you're new, make sure that you comment new. Let me know that. I love, we all do. All the crafty chicks are really good at welcoming new folks over to the comfy nest. And um, if you're catching the replay, let me know that you, you're catching the replay because I will choose a name from the replay watchers to add to the happy mail basket. And I pull names from the happy mail basket a couple times a month to send happy mail craft supplies and goodies to lucky winners. Um, if you don't mind doing that, that's super helpful for me. Let me grab some names from the comments to put in the happy mail basket. Hold on, let me put make some room here. I need room to write. So we're gonna put away a few supplies here. And what I do, I'm gonna scroll all the way to the beginning while I'm live. And then in a couple of days, I'm gonna scroll through again and I'm gonna welcome people and I answer questions in the comments. I go through all the comments and try to answer as many questions as I can and welcome people and all that stuff. And I will pull another name from the replay watchers to add to the happy mail basket. I always announce the names that were pulled inside the Crafty Chicks Club. Sandra Delira, you guys, is the first comment that I saw. She said, text BFS. So Sandra Delira. And you know, the names that are in that basket, you guys, have been in there since February. It's October 29th, or I'm, excuse me, 19th. So Sandra, your name is going in the happy mail basket. Next name is Maxine. Is it L or Ellie? Maxine from Oregon. She says, hello from Oregon. Hello, Maxine, your name is going in the prize basket. So make sure you get into the Crafty Chicks Club because if your name is chosen to win, you um, will be tagged inside the Crafty Chicks Club so you can send me your address and I can send you some goodies. So Maxine, your name's going in the prize basket. And the next name that I see is 
Jennifer Gilder. I'll pull one more after this. I wasn't paying much attention to numbers. Usually, I pull names based on how many how many people are here with us. So Jennifer Gilder, your name's going to the prize basket. I'll pull one more from the live, and then that piece of paper is way too small. And then I will pull um, another name from the replay. Okay, next live person going in is Jana Lowe. She says, oh, I missed the witchy project with the webs. <laughs> I missed it. Jana, it's in the crafty uh, the craft therapy club. Jana, let's see. You're, that was the comment. Oh, I missed the witchy project. <laughs> that was the one that got you in. Jana, your name's going in. So we got Jana, Sandra, Maxine, and Jennifer tonight. And then I'll choose another name from the replay watchers in the next few days. And I will announce them all in the Crafty Chicks Club so that you guys are reminded that your name is in the happy mail basket. It's kind of fun. It's just fun and random, but it's 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 a fun way to kind of like stay connected and share supplies and um, goodies with you all. Good night, Miss Michelle. Sleep well. Thanks indeed for this fun live, Dana says. Even though I don't have a clue what you're saying the last 15 minutes, I got to watch it all. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta write I gotta write a note to Dana. I'm gonna say something to Dana. Dana, we love you. Dana, because she, she can't hear. That's so funny. Her husband's asleep, her earbuds died. Her little headset died and she can't hear us. So Dana Wood, I want to make sure she knows it's her. Dana Wood, we love you, girlfriend. <laughs> Thanks for sticking it out. <laughs> you guys have a beautiful, blessed night. Um, stay well, stay healthy. Go get crafty and have some fun with your supplies. Um, and stay tuned. Um, stay here with me to discover and explore some more with creating in our art journals and just crafting in general. Good night, you guys. Bye.